Welcome back guys, moving on to the next section. We're now gonna be dealing with multiplying and dividing rational functions. And same steps apply as we did with simplifying. So usually what I do is I first factor everything, then I get the restrictions and the way you get the restrictions is the same way you find out when is the denominator equal to zero. It's going to be a little bit different when you're dividing, but once we get to that question, because it's only number three that we're dividing, I'll explain what the difference is. And then you just simplify. The simplifying process is a little bit different. You have, there's like a preliminary step. But it's pretty much the same thing. You're looking for common factors that you cancel out in both the numerator and the denominator. So starting with number one, first step is you want to factor everything. Well, if you notice this first rational function, x cubed over 3x minus 2, everything is factored there. So we can rewrite that as is. And then we're going to be multiplying by this rational function. Notice here how we can factor out a 2 at the top. So if we factor out a 2, we'd be left with 3x minus 2. And then the x here we can't factor. So we have factored everything. Step 1 is complete. Step 2, you want to get the restriction. So basically, when does the denominator equal 0? So the denominator can't equal zero because you can't be dividing by zero. It would make everything undefined. So basically three X minus two can't equal zero, which means that X cannot equal two over three. When you bring this over, divide both sides by three. So that's one of the restrictions. And then also here, X cannot equal zero. So there are two restrictions, these two factors cannot equal zero. Once you got your restrictions, you simplify. Now when you're multiplying, what I like to do is I like to combine all of the numerators, all of the denominators. So if I take x, um, if I take x cubed multiplied by two bracket three x minus two, I'll get two x cubed bracket three x minus two all over, if I multiply these two factors here, I would get x over 3x minus 2. And then from here, it's simplifying rational functions, what we've been doing before. So notice the 3x minus 2s cancel out. The 2, you are dividing by 1, so the 2 stays up top. And then you have x cubed divided by x to the 1. You subtract the exponents, and you're left with x squared. So the final answer is 2x squared. So 2x squared is the final answer, and then the restrictions are x cannot equal 2 over 3, and x cannot equal 0. Right? So when you're multiplying, you first factor everything, get the restrictions, then you combine all of the fractions into one fraction, and then you just simplify that uh, rational expression there. And in this case, we end up with 2x squared. Okay, moving on to number two. Notice how number two and number three are the same, except in number two we are multiplying, and in number three we are dividing. The reason why I did that is because I wanna show you how that restriction step is different for both multiplying and dividing. So, Starting off with number two, first thing we do is we factor everything. Well, notice that everything is factored in both of these rational expressions that we are multiplying. The x plus two, x minus five, x minus four, x plus three can't factor any further. Next step is you wanna get the restrictions. Now, when you're multiplying, the denominators can't equal zero. So x minus five cannot equal zero which means that x cannot equal 5. That's one of the restrictions. And then x plus 3 can't equal 0, which means x cannot equal negative 3. Those are the restrictions right there. 
and then you simplify. So you combine the uh, numerators, combine the denominators, so you would end up with x plus 2 times x minus 4 all over x minus 5 times x plus 3. There's nothing to simplify, there's nothing to uh, cross out here. Right, so this is the answer, and those are the restrictions. So how is number three going to be different than number two? So the only difference is that there's a division symbol right there. Well, same steps apply. You check if, um, if everything is factored, which it is. Then you get the restrictions. Now with the restrictions here, notice that there are three division symbols. You are dividing here, you are dividing here, and you are dividing here as well. Notice here before, there was only two division symbols. You're dividing here and dividing here. So basically, both of these factors couldn't equal zero because you can't be dividing by zero, you can't be dividing by zero. Well, same thing here, you can't be dividing by zero. So this x minus five cannot equal zero. So it means x cannot equal five. Same thing as we had here. You can't be dividing by zero here, so that means x plus three can't equal zero, which means x cannot equal negative three, which is what we had here as well. But this division symbol means that this whole thing can't be zero either. So you can't be dividing by this whole thing being zero. Because if this whole rational expression is zero, then you're dividing by zero, and that would be undefined. So that's where that third division symbol comes in. And notice that if x minus 4 is equal to zero, if the numerator is going to equal zero, then this whole bracket's going to equal zero, and then you're going to be dividing by zero. And you can't be doing that, right? It would be undefined then. So another restriction in this case is x minus 4 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 4. Right, one more time, because if x is 4, the numerator is going to be 0 here. 0 divided by a number is 0, and then you're going to be dividing by 0. If x is 5, you're going to be dividing by 0 here. If x is negative 3, you're going to be dividing by 0 at this step. Right? So there's three division symbols that you have to take into account here, versus here there's only two. So whenever you're dividing by a rational expression, you may want to write this down, you have to um, get restrictions from the numerator and denominator. Now when I say the restrictions from the numerator and denominator, I mean of the rational expression that you're dividing by. Notice that we don't really care about this x plus 2 here. So it's not we're not really concerned about the numerator and the rational expression that comes before the division symbol. It's always the rational expression that comes after. So if we're dividing the rational expression that comes after, we have to get the restrictions from both the numerator and the denominator. When we're multiplying, all we care about is the um, denominator because we can multiply by zero. If this whole thing is zero, we don't really care. Something multiplied by zero is just zero. You can't be dividing by zero. So that's why you have to take into account that numerator right here. So in this case, there are three restrictions. So just remember, when you see a division symbol and you're getting the restrictions, the rational expression that comes after the division symbol, not before, but after, you have to get the restrictions from both the numerator and the denominator. So we have our three restrictions. How do we simplify this? Now, when you're dividing, if you remember, when you're dividing a fraction, what do you do? You flip the second fraction, it turns into multiplication. So you have x plus 3 over x minus 4. 
That's another difference when you have division. So after you get the restrictions, you flip the rational uh, expression that comes after the division symbol here, and then you just simplify the same way. So you just combine these, so it will be x plus 2, x plus 3, all over uh, x minus 5, x minus 4. So that there is the answer. Basically, the x plus 3, x minus 4 is flipped. And there are three restrictions versus here, there are only two. All right, so a couple of new things to take into account when you're simplifying and when you're getting restrictions for when you're multiplying and dividing rational um, expressions. When you're multiplying, same thing applies, denominator can't be zero. When you're dividing the rational expression that comes after the division symbol, the numerator and denominator can't equal zero. And then when you're dividing, remember, after you get the restrictions, you flip that second fraction, and then everything is the same as when you are multiplying.